Shalom and welcome to Zimus of Torah. This year is entitled Trelet number 10. Do we need to have an oral tradition regarding Trelet? This is a very important question. We have certain hints from Chazal descriptions from the rabbis, the Midrashim, the Gemaras regarding Trelet. It comes out every certain amount of years, has this quality and that quality. So let's say we go ahead, we have archaeological digs and this and that, and it matches up. We find we find a squid, a fish, something that matches up exactly with the description of Chazal. But the bottom line is, we didn't have an Ish Mi Pi Ish, a Masora tradition. It was lost. Can we reconstruct it from archaeological and other kinds of proofs? Or do we need to have oral Masora? It's a fantastic question. So the Soloveitchiks, the Briskarov, is quoted differently. And it's a dramatic difference. Rav Yashiv quotes him, and it's brought down in the Chuvas of Rav Yashiv, first volume, Simon Bet, that the Soloveitchiks hold that why is the Regina Revi not right 100 years ago? Why? Because the squid is something that we know about, the rabbis do about it all the time. And if the rabbis were around during the existence of this fish and they knew about it, so why didn't they say, we have the treles? And why didn't they process the treles from the squid that the Regina Rebbe had? This gets nothing new to the fish. Why didn't they? So the fact is, because they knew it was the wrong one. So it's as if we have a Masora from all those rabbis who were alive when their fish was around, which is a common fish. So it's as if the rabbi said, this is not the right one. Why did they reject it? Good question. But it's as if we have a Masora, it's not the right one. That doesn't mean we need a Masora. And in theory, if the Regina came, Regina came up with some fish that nobody saw from another part of the world, and it was out of, you know, it was not in the Middle East for a few thousand years, I know Rabbi saw it, and then it came back somehow, and he could show, you know, the rabbis didn't know about this. But now I could, I could show from all the sources the right one. So then man, the Salvechik family would be fine with it. That's Rav Yasha's version, based on what I understand. It. He doesn't openly say that that if they would have some fish that the rabbis didn't know about, it would be fine. That's the implication. And Rav Shachta certainly does learn Rav Yasha's understanding of the brisker, you know, idea in this way. So according to this version, you don't need a mesora ishmi piyish. You could construct it and reconstruct it from new. The only thing is, if you have the fish that the rabbis were with for hundreds of years. So then the Son of Ages maintained, well, why didn't the rabbis ever see it? Regina Rebbe had something that the rabbis had, you know, they couldn't figure out with that fish? No, that they don't accept. Is there another version of the Son of Ages on this topic, whether you need them so? Yes, and yes, we'll talk about that in the next year.